Hello and welcome to Fierce Friday. My name is Stephanie Dawn. I'm the chair of the Million Mom Movement and I'm joined here by my incredible counsel, Taz Ferreira, Carmela Velarde, and Nayeva Flore. And uh, this is Fierce Friday. This is where we come together to uh, support one another in community. We are the Million Mom Movement. That's a hashtag that we love to use. And to really support each other in understanding exactly what's going on in our food systems um, with conventional farming and how that's impacting our health and the health of those that we love. So today we're gonna be looking at greenwashing part two. We did a greenwashing part one in July. And if you want to uh, uh, um, find that recording, you can go to YouTube. I believe the recording should be there by now. Um, we had some technical difficulties with that one, but it should be there on our YouTube. And um, But before we do that, I'd love to tap um, Carmela Velarde to read our pledge. Will you do that for us, Carm? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks so much, Steph. Um, we have what's what we call as an intention that we set every week. Um, we created this as a council, this pledge, and I invite you to come to our website. If you've never been on it before, you go into movement and join. And from there, you scroll down to where you can find this pledge that you can actually share on. If you're a partner, you can share it on from our apps, which is our boards app or our uh, Purium app. So if you want to say it out loud with me, it really brings a certain resonance when we share what our belief systems are. So I pledge to defend the health of myself and my family. I pledge to choose organic foods that are minimally processed and free of man-made ingredients. I pledge to read labels and educate myself on all aspects of clean living. I understand that my actions today will positively impact the health and environment of future generations. I am committed to sharing this movement of many. I am the Million Mom Movement. And without each of you here, we're not a movement. We are here to share what we believe in. And when we share, we open the minds up to how toxic man-made ingredients could be and how by taking a pledge for your own family, you're going to start to see quality of life. You're going to start to see all the other misleading information like what we're talking about today with greenwashing, how it does not align with what our pledge is. So thank you, I pass the word on. Beautiful, thanks Carmela. So before we dive into our In the News segment, which we have every Friday, I have some news for you. And um, this will be my final month as chair of the Million Mom Movement Council. This was a very difficult and yet necessary decision on my, uh, uh, you know, on my path here. And um, it's been an incredible four years and I'm incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be of service to this beautiful, beautiful movement and to work with this council. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about what we've achieved over the last four years. For those of you who have not been here, um, I want you to know just how far we've come. So in 2018, I was tapped to be the chair by Amy Venner. And it was at that point that we made the decision that we were going to be recreating our website, to be creating a brand new logo, and to be going business forward, which was a really big deal because we were all about health, understandably, right? Who are moms on a mission? We care a lot. And we also realized that it was inherent in our mission, in our um our tagline, you know, a thousand uh, moms and dads in over a hundred communities reaching out to 10 families, that that was inherently business forward. And we needed to own that. We needed to own our influence as brand partners, and we needed to transmit that as the movement. So that all happened in the summer of 2018 going way back in time here. And then since then, um, right before the pandemic, Fierce Friday was launched in January of 2020. And that was really my decision to elevate the um, issue of glyphosate in our food and how we had the solution with Biomedic. So that's how Fierce Friday was born. And we started off with maybe like 12 people in a Zoom room. It was quaint. <laughs> So we've come a long way since January 2020. And then in um, the fall, excuse me, in May of 2021, 
the Lunch and Learn series was born. And so every month we have a Lunch and Learn. Last month was CBD, um, which Naeva did an amazing job on. This month it's going to be um, brain fog, anxiety and fatigue, sort of like the non, um, uh, sort of like the symptoms that we don't see, right? That are hidden. We're gonna be talking about those this month. And um, I'm really proud, I'm really proud of uh, the incredible body of content that we have over at our YouTube channel. So if you wanna see what we've been doing all these weeks and all these months, go back to our YouTube channel. It's an incredible compendium of information. And I just really wanna honor um, the past council members that I've been able to work with, Rebecca Johns and, um, and Jody Parker, and these beautiful goddesses here, Carmela, Taz, and Naeva. It's been an amazing experience working with you all. I am so proud of us, and I'm really excited for where the movement is headed and for new leaders to rise. So we've got four more Fridays together, and um, yeah, I couldn't be more more excited and happy um, to be, um, you know, just closing out this month with you all. So thank you, and yeah, I'm gonna miss you guys, but I will be present. <laughs> I'm not not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Um, all right, let's go to our in the news um, segment here. Let me just pull this up. So this was found by our council this week. Hang on here, just getting it all sorted. Just sharing my screen here. So this is in alignment with um, what we're going to be presenting on today in terms of um, greenwashing part two. So we love the Defender and we recommend the, the, the Defender to get news that you can trust um, under the uh, really uh, the management, the helming of Robert Kennedy Jr., who's someone that we really respect. So this this is um, a, a news piece from April 19th, 2022 this year, but it's really meaningful to us as a movement and to, uh, to what will be presented today. So the FDA fails Americans on food safety and nutrition investigation finds. A political investigation exposes the glaring shortcomings of the US Food and Drug Administration and how the agency fails to protect Americans on food safety and nutrition. The food regulation arm of the US Food and Drug Administration is slow moving, under-resourced, non-transparent, unaccountable, bureaucratic, and reluctant to anger big food. So this is a problem. <laughs> this is a huge problem. This is massively indicting. And we felt that this was important information that you needed to know. And I'm just going to ask um, someone in the council to please go ahead and share the link so that folks can follow along on their own computer screens. Um, that's according to a political report that exposes the glaring shortcomings of the FDA's Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, also known as CFSAN. While the government and the media focused on the drug oversight role of the FDA during the COVID-19 pandemic, the part of the agency responsible for food safety was kept out of the public eye and Americans continue to suffer the consequences, the report claims. But problems with food oversight began long before the pandemic, according to insiders who spoke to Politico. So this is not news to the Million Mom Movement Council. We know that you know, the corporations are in bed with our government and vice versa, and it is a problem. And we rely on ourselves. You know, We're the ones that wanna put on the, the green capes every day to reach out to our representatives, to reach out to those who are elected um, by us to do better, right? So um, proactive solutions to acute issues such as food poisoning outbreaks and ongoing problems such as growing obesity in the US are lacking. There's a long running joke among FDA officials that the F in FDA is silent, according to the report. I'm just going to scroll down here um, because this was quite alarming to me when I saw that in bold, people are going to die. President Obama in 2011 signed the Food Safety Modernization Act to protect Americans from foodborne illnesses, but outbreaks of illness caused by contaminated fruits and vegetables continue, largely due to pathogens in water used in farming. 11 years later, the FDA still does not have a standard in place regarding the safety of agricultural water. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. So 
Uh, people are literally going to die because of FDA's surrender to agriculture on pathogens and irrigation water, the environmental working group Scott Faber told Politico. So we need to be the squeaky wheel here, right? People are going to die. So, you know, we here at the Million Mom Movement, we say not on our watch because we're going to raise our voices and we're going to take action. And so it's this kind of information that can really fuel what it is that we have here with Perium Health Products and how we can really educate and inspire people to take action around their health, around their drinking water. And as Amy Venner says, you know, when we know better, we can do better, right? When we know better, we can do better. So um, I think that's it for now. You guys can um, get in there and, and read the entire article, really follow, uh, follow the Defender and Children's Health Defense, get on their email, address uh, um, email list because they share powerful information all the time. Okay, let's move on to our topic today, which is greenwashing part two. And I don't know who wants to go first. So I'm just gonna leave it up to the council. Whoever wants to jump in. And Thank mute you so much, Steph. That was perfectly said. You know, I'm just continuing what you said, not on our watch, okay? This will not be happening as long as we're here and we are bringing this information to each and every one of you. So we did that segment last time on greenwashing, and but this time we are really concentrating on supplementation and supplements, okay? And we talk all the time about health, you know, um, zinc, vitamin C, all of these things. And then people run out and they go buy it somewhere. And they tell us, they're like, well, we've been using exactly what you've been saying, but which one? What's the source? Is it the one that we've been talking about? Or is it something that you've been buying that seemingly looks good? right? How many times do we hear this? I know I hear this on the daily. I have clients calling me and I go to the grocery store with them and it's don't buy this, don't buy this. Look at this ingredient. So we are training you. We are showing you what to look for. So we are going to just dive right in. I'm going to share my screen and here we go. Do you see my screen? I guess so. All right. No. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Um, my okay. Okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. We're good. We're good. Okay. So the greenwashing the supplements. So I wanted to start off by saying that those supplements that you've been taking that you believe are supporting your body's natural defense might be harming you instead, okay? I've encountered so many people that they opened up their pantry and you see a plethora mm -hmm. of supplements and they keep telling me, they're like every single time you go on live and you're talking about something, we rush out and we go buy them, okay? And then mm -hmm. I see it all. But in my mind, what I hear, I hear alarm bells and I'm hearing well, that has heavy metals, that has toxicity, that has, that has, that has, right? But we have to show you how to fish. We have to show you how to do this and what to look for. And this is really important to understand that clinically tested ingredients, the word tested, I hear this so often, this does not mean it's proven. And sometimes a combination of these ingredients have never been tested together. Tested by being FDA approved laboratory, the FDA does not improve labs. Did you guys know that? This is completely misleading. And whenever we hear these terms, we're like, yeah, but the FDA say it's good. It's lab tested. Where are your lab testings, right? Have we not heard these before? So the FDA does not approve labs. The more we empower you of what to look for, now you know. When you go somewhere, you see these labels, you just disregard it completely because you cannot trust this. And this is how companies are misleading us. Pharmaceutical grade, 
since there is no such thing in supplement ingredients, there is no such thing as pharmaceutical grade, okay? Here is a great image, okay? This image is all of these powerful companies that own pretty much everything, everything besides Purium, right? So these companies control all of the supplements. They own everything. And this is really important. Okay, so they're not all linked to Monsanto, but they're all linked to these powerful companies that all, yeah, it's not, they're not all owned by Monsanto. Like Nestle's owned, I don't think Coca, Pepsi, not all of them, but they're all full of toxic ingredients. And it's important to know which company is owned by which manufacturer. Okay, and ingredients- yeah. Yes. yes, um I'm only seeing the health washing. Uh is 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 everyone else seeing your slides? Did you have slides, Taz? Or yes. are you guys not seeing it? I'm not. Is anyone else seeing it? No, not just the health washing. Just the health washing. Yeah. Oh. Well then. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that's a problem. Let's let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. Oh, are we good now? Do you I guys see it? Do you mind no. your screen share and reshare the other page you want to share if possible? Yes. Well, thank you for telling me that. Okay. Do you guys see it? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Yay. Did you guys see this? It contains clinically tested ingredients. Now we're seeing it for the first time. Oh. Okay, but you see it. Okay, yep. so this is great. So you guys can take a screenshot of this. And this is really important to know, right? So what I mentioned before about the FDA does not approve labs on pharmaceutical grade. Okay, so we went through this and this image. This is what I was talking about. This is really important to understand how all of these companies own all of the supplementation and which supplements is owned by whom, okay? I mention this all the time, the sourcing matters. Where does it come from? Who is the manufacturer, okay? We'll come back to this. Now, which ingredients to avoid? So I'm going to list a couple ingredients here that are really, that are the main ones to avoid. And then we'll go through it and I'll show you guys what to look for and how to look for them. So magnesium stearate, so steric acid, that's another form the way it's listed. Gluten-based substances, wheat starches, any type of starches. MSG, yes, it's still in a lot of supplements. Lactose, sugar. I mean, you don't even think sugar is in it, but you have to look at the smaller ingredients. Do you guys remember those um those gummies, those apple cider vinegar gummies that everyone was have, that it was taught that it's good for your digestion? Well, that's another way to greenwash. Everyone would jump on that. They're like, we can't take apple cider vinegar, but we can have those gummies. And those gummies were full of sugar and sugar is what's destroying your microbiome. So it's like, no, this does not help at all. And soy, of course, this is not good. And titanium dioxide. Okay. So this is something that we'll talk about a little bit more. Red dyes, methyl acrylic copopolymer, methyl, and propyl parabens. Okay, so titanium dioxide. I love how this has been in the news lately, right? Where have we seen this a lot? Skittles, ring a bell, we've been talking about it. So titanium dioxide has been everywhere, right? And we know it's so toxic for us. It's in paint, cosmetics, paper, sunscreen. It's used as a fill, filler in a lot of products and in the white powder, in powders and um, supplements, okay? So the magnesium silicate, this is in deodorant, cosmetics. You'll see again, it, this is coated in supplements, okay? and hydrogen, hydrogenated oils and other forms of oils that are in the supplements as well. And then all of the artificial colors, we're talking about the reds, the blues, the yellows, these are all added to make them attract 
attractive. You look at it, you see these vibrant colors, your brain automatically goes, that must be healthy, right? Because we are programmed mm -hmm. to look at fruits and veggies with all of these beautiful colors. This is how our biological system is made. So what they do is they start to tap into that and to say, okay, their receptors are being triggered when they're looking at these colors. They are measuring all our brain waves to see the way we are adapting and responding to certain things. So it's really important that you really train yourself to look for these numbers in these colors. And how about artificial flavoring? So we know that these are really harmful for us because they're derived from high fructose corn syrup, vegetable protein, artificial sweeteners, and those artificial sweeteners come in different forms, right? From all the alls, you know, when they end with OL, that's a food alcohol, that's a sugar alcohol. So you need to look for those as well. And then you have the lead, mercury, heavy metals, which are in a lot of supplements. And this is, you know, um, they're polluting everything. Yes. Okay. And then we will talk about the tips to choose the best vegan supplement. So you guys know I've been vegan for the past 14 years. So I like to look at vegan supplements over any others. So you need to watch out for misleading and mis claiming misleading claims, labels that don't tell you about fillers, and avoid additives, and look for third-party testings, find supplements with vegan ingredients, and right drug interactions, something we always look for as well. So I will, so do I stop, share, and then reshare like a website? Is that how I do this? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what I'm doing now. I am going to share my screen with you to show you guys how to look for, I do, okay, here we go. Okay, how to train yourself to look for these ingredients. So I just came to this website, iHerb, okay? And I just typed in multivitamin and I saw this. This is a brand that's called Alive. So let's look at this together, okay? We look at it. It looks good, right? You see all these fruits and veggies? I'm like, all right. And it says nature's way. Well, you remember that article that I posted about all of the companies that are connected? Well, nature's way is part of that. But if you don't know that yet, you will look at this and you'll say, well, this looks great. Okay, it is high potent B vitamins to help convert food to fuel, right? This looks great. This looks like all natural and food-based. Energized with food-based blends with orchard fruits, garden veggies, and power blend, powder blend. This looks amazing, right? So any consumer would look at this and think this is what they need to be purchasing. And this is exactly what we talk about greenwashing. So companies spend so much money with this little green leaf with all of these fruits and veggies, with all of these misleading claims, okay? So let's look at the ingredients. Okay, so now we're starting off. This is how the supplement fact will look. We see vitamin C. And because you guys are all loyal on Fierce Friday and you know ascorbic acid is actually not vitamin C at all, that is the first red flag, right? So we see that. But now we're going through everything. We're looking at all of their data. Okay, let's go further. Let's look at here. Okay, is it showing up? Okay, so the fruits and veggies. I can't see this. Sorry, guys. It's coming. Okay, we see all the fruits and veggies that they're saying. There is orchard fruits. Um, blueberry, pomegranate, all of these fruits. Note that none of them are organic. So if they're not organic, start automatically assuming that they're sprayed with herbicides and pesticides because that's what it means, okay? So you're putting toxic chemicals into your body on a cellular level because this is in pill form, in a powder form, okay? So start recognizing that. But what's more important? This is what I like looking at whenever I have a bottle of any supplement. The other ingredients right here. Do you see that where it says other ingredients? So now let's look at that. So you have cellulose, you have steric acid, you have sodium. You see all of these things here. 
these are what we need to look at because these are what's in our supplements. And this is how they greenwash everything. And you know what? If you guys want me to look up a certain product, you can post it in the chat and I'll look it up. But I've had a, spe a special request to look up this one. This is a company that, you know, we used to trust. I used to trust so much, right? Garden of Life. Garden of Life used to be a great company, but they sold out to Nestle. So this is what happens to these companies. Even though you used to buy something from a company for years, they are always changing, right? Meaning that they can get bought over at any moment from a big corporation. So just because you used to trust them doesn't mean they're trustworthy today. So always keep up to date where which company has been bought out. So today, Nestle is not healthy anymore because they are backed by, they are bought out by Nestle, which Nestle is Monsanto. So even though it says organic, it says all of these things on it, you see, we have non-GMO, right? But I know a lot of their things say organic, but who are you trusting, right? What is the source? And what I love about Purium is that we know the sourcing. We don't work with any middleman we work directly with the manufacturer because we are the manufacturer, right? So you look here, you see everything is organic. So that's great. Every single ingredient is organic and even the other ingredients. You have vegetable cellulose, you have starches, you know, like it's not that horrible, but look at the sourcing because we don't know anything else that they're being tested on. If they are linked to Nestle, they probably have heavy metals. They probably have pesticides. There's other things that you need to put into consideration. Okay. So you know what? I will pass this on to my colleague, Naeva, who will be diving deeper into this about the other companies. Thank you. Off to you, Naeva. Awesome. Thank you so much, Taz. That was so wonderful. And, you know, drop, drop us a one in the comments if you learned something today, because I definitely learned a few things, some ingredients to look for, some companies to look out for, how to look at labels better. Awesome. I'm glad you all are learning something from this. That's why we're doing this. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper about why all organic food isn't necessarily organic, why we can't trust that necessarily, because many of our organic foods, they get the labeling and they get certified. And then at the very end of their crop, they spray it with glyphosate so that, that way their produce can yield more. It can dry out the, the um, grass matter or the plant matter, and they can then harvest it a lot quicker and more efficiently. And there's no testing right before or right after harvest, which is totally different than what we do here at Purium. And so this is something important to know that even though it's certified organic, some of these foods are still contaminated with glyphosate and that's how. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and share a few articles with you that we found um, with the council and I. And so these articles are from Momovation and she shares a lot about glyphosate in our food. She is in alignment with the detox project. And so she tests a lot of different foods um, just across the board for glyphosate as well as, as supplements and so many other things. So how does glyphosate get into organic pea protein at higher levels than conventional pea protein? It's exactly how I just told you, right? So those organic farmers get their certification and, um, and once they're certified, they have that label that they can put on their things. And the testing doesn't necessarily happen after every or before every harvest. So to be honest, we aren't 100% sure, but we did investigate the issue that this is what we found. It's likely a combination of desiccation, which is that spraying before harvest, processing, and lax organic regulations. So desiccation is a farming practice where the farmer sprays glyphosate on the fields just before the harvest to dry out the crop sooner so it can be harvested sooner because of the spraying of glyphosate being so close to the time of, 
that it's harvested, the levels of glyphosate will be higher in these foods. The detox project has consistently found contamination in products containing oats, wheat, some spices and legumes as they've been testing the food supply in the US and Europe for the last four years. When it comes to processing, the devil is a practice called swapping out. This is where a manufacturer will swap an organic ingredient for conventional ingredients at the factory or try to pass it off conventional for pass off a conventional product for organic in the same way. So um, this is another way for levels of glyphosate and other pesticides to be higher in the final organic product. So this is really scary, right? This is not what we think when we see the or certified organic label. So moving forward, popularity of plant-based alternatives has fueled an increase in pea protein. The problem is insufficient testing. The Detox, Detox Project tested the top eight selling popular protein powders on Amazon, and most of these brands were vegan and contained pea protein, but they also tested brands with soy, whey, collagen proteins as well, and when they got the results back, they were shocked at the amount of glyphosate in those products. So moving forward, non-GMO and USDA organic products may have traces of glyphosate in it. And what's surprising to some is when non-GMO verified and USDA organic foods are found to have traces of glyphosate. This should not be surprising for non-GMO verified foods who are only certifying they are non-GMO, but are not telling you anything about the pesticides they use on their products to combat the weeds. It's clearly demonstrated here that non-GMO foods can have traces of glyphosate. So those of you who don't understand non-GMO versus organic, non-GMO just means that it's not a GMO seed. It doesn't mean that they don't spray it with chemicals. That's when the organic certification comes in. And then furthermore, the glyphosate residue free certification. So those are the things we wanna be looking for. What is more surprising is finding that the USDA organic certified foods with trace amounts of herbicide glyphosate because glyphosate is prohibited in organic standards as a form of weed control. However, when the USDA organic foods were found to have traces of glyphosate, the levels were far lower than other products. So you can see here unless there's the conventional foods which have higher amounts and then non-GMO foods which still have mediocre high amounts and organic foods have less but like they said in the previous article sometimes organic foods are found to have more because they spray it right before harvesting and processing it into the next food product that they're going to create out of it. So this is this is something that we want to look out for in the ingredients and in the things that we're purchasing. So it seems like every Everyone is making smoothie before running out the door these days. Why not, right? But what are the best protein powders? It's a great way to incorporate fresh ingredients in a ready-to-go container or whole superfoods into a delicious, delicious meal or treat. And for ladies getting fit after having babies, it's important to get the right kind of nutrition after a workout to build up muscle. What's not great is the FDA doesn't regulate protein powders. You guys, there's no regulation on our protein powders the same way it does on food. So classifying it under dietary supplements, some of the ingredients in protein powders are being marketed to those looking for a way to help build muscle or keep a healthy weight. And for us green smoothie lovers with a scoop of protein powder in the recipe, we're trusting that these proteins are beneficial to our health and not hiding dirty ingredients in them, right? So, how did we find the best protein powders? So we all know that we have the best protein powders here at Purium because we have our third party testing. We know that it's tested from harvest, from the field, at the manufacturing company, throughout the processing, um, you know, throughout the process. And then at the end, that final product is also tested. So we have so many tests throughout the process that we know, and we can stand by our products knowing that it doesn't have any residues of any glyphosate or any other of these ingredients that we're concerned about. So there's also like Taz mentioned, there's also all the toxic vitamins. So I'm not gonna go into this one, but I did wanna go just right down here where it says organic non-GMO versus non-organic. So as you can see, 
GMOs can commonly be hidden in toxic vitamins and supplements, particularly vitamins B12, B2, C, and E. Key ingredients that signify GMO products in the vitamins include maltodextrin from corn, ascorbic acid, and um, as well as soy and rice proteins. While supplement ingredients are disclosed in the US according to GMO Compass, additives do not necessarily have to be declared if they are not purified and contain no microorganisms. These additives can be necessary for forming the supplement into a capsule or gel cap, or they can be unnecessary additives like colorants, because we love to make everything some bright, pretty red color. So, you know, some of these additives are things that they need to make it into a hard capsule to make it hold its form. And some of it is absolutely just because they want to add more ingredients and that's not okay. So if you're trying to avoid GMOs, then you'll need to find vitamins and supplements that are USDA organic and non-GMO verified, in my opinion, not or, it would be an and right there. So... People assume organic companies are testing their supply chain for problems, but it seems as if that is not happening. In an increasingly complex world, organic companies are relying on the global supply chain without the neutrality of lab testing to ensure quality. And as organic industry grows, this is proving to be very unwise. Now, this isn't True to all organic brands or all supply chains, some brands are going above and beyond and utilizing third party, third party to uh, acquire clean ingredients that are tested, but these clean supplies are often more expensive. And if a brand is trying to drive their costs down, they may opt for cheaper supply chain without testing. In this sense, you get what you pay for. So this is very alarming. And I have one more slide for you. And so I just want to show you right here, health related MLM companies that are best for your health. The list isn't long guys, Purium's the only one. Look at us, Lonesome right here, certified organic and non-GMO ingredients has supportive and informative website and clear labeling. That's what you look for in your supplements. That's what you look for in your company. So I'm just gonna refresh this page and show you all the image at the top that shows all the different companies that are out there and Perium being in the best category. And then I'll go ahead and send you all this link so that you can share this today. And I'll be passing it over to you in a second, Carmela, as soon as I can bring up my slide. I thought it would load really quick. <laughs> well, you can go ahead, Carmela, I'll bring it up. Um, and I, I can have, share it after. Yes, I have that slide too. So no worries. Oh. And thank you so much, Neva. Wow. So many great articles just to illuminate and spotlight just what we're sharing today, that our supplementations and what, what we have on the healthy food market isn't what we thought. And so just to understand deeper, um, you know, what we have and sort of shifting us into our focus, which is our supplementation model, which is Perium. Um, so I'm going to share screen, and this is the article that Naeva was referring to, um, wherein in, in, in was it 2017, um, I was sharing this all the time because amongst all of the MLM companies, you see that Perium is in this category of ingredients, bad, better, and best. <laughs> it's terrible that this long, long list of bad is here. Um, now I'm going to take you back. Momovation has a lot of really good information and they're referring to us, um, the different best bets for vitamin lines that we could be referred to, but look at what they're saying. So you can't always trust even what they're saying and kind organics is the all organic line in garden of life and they're both owned by Nestle. So again, if you watch Greenwashing Part One, the big conglomerates that all own all of the food industry and medical food and medicine and food industry, um, Nestle is a big part of that. Um, New Chapter is owned by Procter & Gamble. So I didn't know this, I had to do some research and 
um, real food and mega food are not manufactured by the formulators. So when I looked into mega food, because I used to actually consume mega foods, I don't know if you've seen this line, it's been around for quite some time. Um, they had recently been acquired by another whole food supplement manufacturing company, PharmaBite. So do you see what is happening is that many of these companies, they get moved around by who is it that farms for them? And that's not okay. So um, let me make sure this is the right. Okay, so our period promise is that we have no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, no artificial sweeteners, synthetic vitamins, binders, fillers, no GMOs, no pesticides, no irradiated ingredients. We're certified organic, farm fresh, superfood based, plant powered, processed close to the source, gently dehydrated under minimal heat, high nutrient to calorie ratio, backed on ancient wisdom, backed by modern science, and there's a 60 day money back guarantee. So amongst this whole sea of misinformation and misleading information, we always come back here because in the end, what our promise is, is where we can have ammunition to share this replay with others. But then also what we have in our hands is that Purim is the manufacturer, like Naeva said. Now, what I love is that Dave Sandoval our visionary, our original farmer, he sources 50% in the United States in farms. And they're from high altitude locations. They're from virgin soil. They have really deep, rich top soil. And they have a process called green manure. So I found this incredible video that, um, that was taken during our Diamond Club of Dave talking about a little bit about the farming principles. And I think that it's really great to hear him speak, um, especially when we're talking about greenwashing, because we're the opposite of greenwashing. We are fully transparent. We want you to understand the soil it's grown in, how the farmers are partnered with us. And so I'm going to play this quickly. So don't go driving by. Okay. But in Southern Utah, there's an amazing place because there was a, a lake there. And it was there for thousands of years and it dried up about 50 years ago. And when it dried up, it left behind, you know how a lake is, right? Like that. Well, it filled in all the siltation flowing in and it just kept getting, you know, more and more dirt in it until it just wasn't a lake anymore, you know? And, um, but what was left behind was on the edges was like 15, but in the middle, 99 feet deep, rich of the most amazing soil you'd ever seen. Imagine fishes decomposing, shells decomposing, all the snow melt from the mountains coming down year after year after year. And so we did something called green manure. It's a way to create massive nitrogen in soil. And what you do is you create, you grow alfalfa. And we had to let the alfalfa grow for a couple of years. So the roots got 10, 12, 20 feet deep in the soil. And then you cut the alfalfa and you just mulch it and leave it right on top of the earth and it starts to attract worms. And then after it dries up, you turn it just barely underneath the topsoil and now the worms come and they start to eat all that decomposing matter. Now the alfalfa itself, its roots have something called ribosium. Ribosium is like an infection for the soil. It's like a virus that gets on the plant from the soil and it hooks onto the root and these big nodules uh, grow and then they die. And when they die, all the nitrogen that they had taken from the soil gets put into the root of the alfalfa. And that's called nitrogen fixing. Have you guys heard of nitrogen fixation, yeah. nitrogen fixing? Well, that's what does it is these ribosium. The ribosium have a very short life. And so when they die, they outgas, what? Nitrogen. So by, you got the worm poop, you got the ribosium, you got all of that decomposing matter from the, from the lake bed. And this is, in my opinion, I don't know that there's any richer soil on the planet. I really don't. I mean, I really, I don't know if you guys remember your history class, the Tigris and the Euphrates, how they called that the fertile crescent because of the way that the remineralization happened. 
well, this was that type of environment. So um, because of our crop rotations and that, you know, I mean, this is like a 7,000 acre dry lake bed. So we're able to rotate our crops and use it in the way it's supposed to be used. And um, that allows for, yeah, that allows and for- And how far is it from other industry? So it's about 250 miles from the nearest big city would be Salt Lake. Maybe 300 miles. Okay. I cite this because I think it's really important for us to understand just how potent it is as consumers to have access to understanding our soil health and our farming principles and our farmer and the principles that this farmer, Dave Sandoval, has relationships with 50% of the other, um, uh, what is this, sources, sources for our company. So he has a standard, a very specific standard. And when he's this transparent with us, do you think you're going to find that in other companies? That's my question. Do you really think you're going to have access to direct to the source of the person who's creating the standards for our food? No. And so our company has been around for 30 years and there's a specific testing um, that's called HPLC and it's called um, HPLC meaning high performance liquid chromatography basic, um, which is one of the most sophisticated testings to identify individual ingredients. Um, and that's what's amazing is that we are sharing exactly what it is. So I'm gonna share screen one more time because besides that, what we do have with Purium is our product portfolios where we go in depth, we go in depth. And when we talk about the biomedic, for instance, we're going in depth with the blog with where we wanna help you become the researcher. We're giving you access to all of this research from the doctor who created it with David Sandoval. Um, so we're giving you in what other companies do not have. That's the opposite of greenwashing. We're not misleading you. We're actually leading you to where it is to go. And not only that, you see these different sources and studies, you can open them up. And what I found with them was that more information is shared on the individual ingredients that we have and its potency within the formula. So um, we're coming to a close here. So I'm going to pass the mic over so we can actually start to have some questions coming our way from the field. Beautiful. Thanks, Carm and Taz and Nayeva. So rich. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, we'd love to hear your voices. You know, there's been a lot of chat going on um, in the chat. And if you are, <laughs> I, I, I saw what you wrote, Kahina, about, you know, if only we get the money back from all the supplements that we bought that have those crap in it, right? Um, wouldn't that be amazing? Um, but, but really, you know, we want to celebrate what we have here because there is no competition, as you shared, Naiva. Like, there is no competition to what Purium has. And that's meaningful to me as a consumer. That's meaningful to me as a Purium brand partner. So um, yeah, just raise your hand if you have a question or you'd like to um, share your voice or even comment. You don't have to have a question if you, you just wanna share your voice about what you learned today and how you're feeling about what's been shared. We do need you to raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Oh, there we go. There we go. Natalie, Natalie Lafer, welcome. Hi, I'm really glad I'm on this call. I'm like doing three, four, five things at the same time. I had a life before, but I'm finally back. And I had like a lot of like inner child healing this year. So I kind of lost the map of my business. And uh, I decided to take back my health again before going back to school in the in the fall. And you know, I'm in Montreal, so you have to be healthy in the summer before winter comes. Otherwise, you pay the consequences. And I decided to go back and again like 70% raw. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, 
And I'm just glad I'm listening to this call because for six months, I went back working part-time in this source who sells these products. And I'm like, don't try to tell me this is better than what I was doing, you know? And I tried different things and I was like, this green juice, like there's nothing compared to the power shake. I have tried many things and all of them tasted like old grass. So, and you look at the ingredients and so it's just like, I'm just really glad I'm not always available on Fridays because sometimes I have consultations and I have a lot of, of things on my plate as a single mom, but I'm just super glad this call is happening and inspired me. I took notes of, I want to do in a French one, a mm-hmm. French version of this. Great call. idea. Mm-hmm. We're, we're actually creating a big, big community uh, in mm-hmm. Quebec with Thurium. And it's really hard to get organic food here in this in the winter. It's too much expensive in the winter. So mm-hmm. I can't wait to create um, a masterclass about glyphosate pesticides and the health problems that it creates and what are the solutions. So I'm really Brilliant. glad I'm on this call, even if I'm doing 10 times, 10 things at the same time. <laughs> like I think I take like 50 screenshots with my phone and my computer. Yeah. So I just wanted to share. Thank you. And thank you, Taz. And thank you all of you for keep inspiring us and yeah and just Mm -hmm. saying the truth you know about like what's out there you know Mm -hmm. yeah wonderful merci beaucoup to you Natalie thank you for raising your voice and what you're going to be doing in Quebec I'm really thrilled for what that means for your community and and Taz ah all right Selena Banuelos welcome hi everybody Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I've been able to uh, jump on a couple of these calls and I'm still somewhat new. Um, There's so, it's so exciting and there's so much going on that it's, it feels for me um, overwhelming, but in a good way. Um, But I am loving what you guys have been teaching on, on um, Fridays. And so I have a couple of small questions for Carmela. Um, when you shared, um, it looked like it was on Facebook. I have I have a Facebook set up, but I haven't really, I'm still trying to get all situated with uh, Instagram. Is all of those videos that you showed on Facebook that we, we can just grab and take and use? So what's um, shared here, this is recorded. Mm-hmm. So you could okay. always use this as a resource, but then we'll put links and videos into our Million Mom Movement official group in uh, Facebook. Okay, got you. Um, I actually have one more to share that's perfect okay. um, in that group that I didn't get to share here today, but it was okay. Dave Sandwell talking about um, where our ingredients are sourced. And mm-hmm. that is a potent, I mean, it's really great to share with people who have like, oh, it doesn't matter. It, you know, many right. factors doesn't matter. And then we have the manufacturing facility tour. That's an, again, a, the opposite mm-hmm. of greenwashing. We're giving you access. Yes. And I, I love it because um, I'm working on my first brand partner. So, and he is very on top of, um, you know, he wants to know what's going on with our, you know, he says there's fluoride in our water. He's just all on top of all these ingredients and he has questions. And I'm, I now have everything you guys have given me today. I'm like, this is perfect. So thank you so much. I'm going to share that with him and I know it's going to help. So it will be a good August for me. Yay. Right on. Selena. Thank, thank you thank- ladies. Yeah. Thanks for raising your voice. And I just want to, mm-hmm. you know, for those of you who are new and you've got brand partners that are new, you guys have got to go check out the YouTube channel. You'll be yeah. amazed by the content that's there, all of our sad to rad, um, all of the lunch and learns since last May. I mean, it's it's quite a, a, a treasure trove of information. I just spoke to a brand partner the other day. I want the council to know that she's like, Steph, the Million Mile Movement tools are pretty much the only ones that I'm sharing right now. So, because we have something for everyone. So thank you, Selena. Anyone else? We have um, a few minutes here if you want to raise your hand. The MMM is brilliant. (laughs) It is, Kahina. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, when people care, um, that's when things can really change, right? Vincent, welcome. Are you there, Vincent? Yes, welcome, everyone. Uh, Hi. uh, Hi, I'm uh, in the heart of nature right now, and uh, 
uh, I, I just, there was this notification that popped on my phone to, to hop on that call. And I, I took a break from work uh, to hop in and I'm, 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 I'm so happy. Uh, I've, I've been having so much breakthroughs in the last weeks. Uh, so I've joined Perium uh, um, uh, two months ago because I really had guidance uh, to, to, to go that way. And, uh, and as a man, as a sensitive man, a loving man, it was always hard all my life to open my heart. And, uh, mm. and since those last month, I've, I've had so much breakthrough, uh, cause I, I, I had a hard time just like really surrender and trust this community. I felt like there was so much love and, um, and I was, I, I guess I was not ready when I came in to, to really open my heart and, uh, and let that, that love in and, uh, mm. and, 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 and just by committed and, and really like, um, surrendered, I had like a lot of breakthroughs and I'm, I'm just so grateful and happy because, uh, because I'm, I'm living now with a heart full open and, and, and life is, is just so beautiful. And now I want to inspire more, uh, men like me to, to really, uh, live more in their body and open their heart, and um, and for me, this this community is uh, has has really uh, changed my life. So uh, I'm I'm really super grateful of all the awareness that you you guys are sharing. I'm I'm just I'm I'm so much in my mission. I'm I'm driven, and I feel like I'm I'm stepping into my true masculinity as a man, like driven with a a, a heart driven mission and being able as well to to really be sensitive and in my heart at the same time, loving and, and calm as well. So I, I, I want to inspire more men like me to, to as well, like, you know, being fit, you can be in fitness and you, you can, you can work out a lot, but as well live in your heart and be loving and, and calm. So uh, thank you so much for the, for this, this community. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, I'm feeling all the love and I'm really happy to share it with all of you guys. Yay! Oh my God, we're so glad you raised your voice today. <laughs> so beautiful. We need more men in this company. We need more men in the Million Mom movement. And you're so welcome here. And you're so needed, Vincent. You are so needed. Your voice, your love, your heart, your intelligence, it's all needed. Okay. The only way that we are going to get to a million in the Million Mom movement is because of men and women like you who are sharing what you know. All right. So God bless you. I'm so glad you're here today. <laughs> so sweet. So sweet. All right. Well, um, I don't see other, any other hands raised. So um, I think, oh, Mallory, let's get that quick little comment in Mallory. Welcome Mallory East. <laughs> Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, now can we can. Now? Yeah. I just, I just wanted to say thank you to the Million Mom Movement for all of you doing what you're doing. It's just incredible. Um, and the information that you're providing to all of us is so important. You know, I've felt really sketched out by a lot of supplements for a really long time. And that's the reason why, like, I really just avoided them. Um, so anyways, I just love you all and just really appreciate that you're like putting tangible like words and like making sense of this and like putting it into the physical realm and like approaching it because it can be something that can be really like, I used to be really scared and kind of be like, oh, there's nothing that I can do. I don't know how to do it. There's all this secret stuff going on in the background. And uh, what do I do? What do I do? And you're all just like ripping the veil up and I just appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, you're so welcome. This is, you know, this council is fierce, right? That's why it's called Fierce Friday. This council is fierce. Um, I, I would also, you know, say that we're pretty fearless as well when it comes to sharing what we know and really raising our voices. So, you know, it's our sincerest wish that we give you, you know, the information that you need to raise your voice and to share what you know. And like I always say at the end of Fierce Friday, if you've been inspired by anything you've heard today by Carmela, Naeva, Taz, or myself, go out there, go live, do a post, share with your friends, your family. Next week, we're business forward. It's all about how to bring your kids into your period business. All right. So thank you. God bless you. We're so grateful to have you be a part of this movement. We could not do it without you. All right. Go out there and share the good green word. Okay. Go be fearless and fierce. Bye-bye. We, we have a CTA. Oh, shoot. I'm so Don't sorry. Don't think yet. Stay. Okay, one more thing. 
Thanks so much for your time. So we'd like to have a call to action. We're going back to the top of the list this week to Village Hearth whole wheat bread, which contains 1,150 parts per billion of glyphosate. You guys, 10 parts per billion of glyphosate is the legal limit, okay? This has 1,150 parts per billion. So please go to their Instagram. I can't find their Instagram page. So I looked up the village hearth bread hashtag. That's how I found all of these village hearth. Um, it's sold at hy market. And so look up the hashtag village hearth bread. You can see what I typed in right here at the top. And you'll see all of these images that say support them right? Purchase okay. their bread, support them. So go comment on there and say, hey, are you aware that there's glyphosate in the whole wheat that you're using in this bread? Are you aware that glyphosate causes cancer? And that's it. That's the call to action. So back to you, Steph. Yeah, right on. Thanks for inserting that in really quickly. Yeah, so that's our Instagram call to action at the end of every Fierce Friday, Village Hearth Bread. Get in there and ask questions, be kind, be loving. That's how we're going to move the needle. All right. God bless you all. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.